Okay, let's keep going here. So uh, we're going to continue what we talked about last time. We're going to use the formulas we talked about, and we're going to try to express um, an equation in terms of one unknown. Look at this first example. You've got a piece of string that's x inches long, and it's going to be shaped into a circle, and you want to express the area of the circle in terms of x, where x is the length of the piece of string. Okay, so the area of a circle is pi r squared, and you want to express this in terms of x. But what is x? x is the, is the turns out, isn't x the circumference of the, of the circle? I mean, x is the length of string, so 2 pi r equals x. So that's, that's the trick on a lot of these. If you want to express this in terms of x, you have to find a relationship between r and x, because you want to get rid of r. The relationship between r and x is that x equals 2 pi r. So this is very common. Uh, I know these might seem hard, but when you do a few of them, you start to get used to how they work. All right, so we're getting rid of r. So you solve this equation for r, and then you plug it back in. Wherever there's a r, you plug in x over 2 pi. You square it, simplify it. You get um, pi x squared over 4 pi squared. You can cancel one of the pi's. So the, the area equals x squared over 4 pi. So get used to that. That's the kind of reasoning you have to get used to. Uh, try this one. A circle is inscribed in a square of side x. Inscribed just means it's inside of, and it's touching. So a circle is inscribed in a square of side x. Express the area of the circle in terms of x. Okay, so the area of a circle, again, is pi r squared, and you want to express this in terms of x, where x is the side of the square. Perhaps we should draw a picture again. The picture looks kind of like this. X is the side of the square. The circles inside of the square has radius r. So what is the relationship between r and x? Can you see what it is? Can you, can you see that um, if you have two r's, an r here and an r here, that would equal x. 2r equals x. So when you draw the picture, it's usually pretty, um, pretty clear what to do. So how do you finish this? You're trying to get rid of r, right? So you solve this equation for r equals x over 2. You come back over here, wherever there's an r, you plug in x over 2, simplify it, a equals pi x squared over 4. Let's do another one. Here we have one where a rectangle is inscribed in a circle. Again, that just means it's inside of the circle. And the circle has radius 8 centimeters. Express the perimeter of the rectangle in terms of w. Okay, well the perimeter of a rectangle is 2w plus 2l. When it says express in terms of w, that means we have to get rid of l, right? So what you need to do is you need to find another relationship between l and w. If you draw a picture, there is l, there is w, and the radius is 8 centimeters, so from here to here is 8. That means that the diagonal would be 16 centimeters, wouldn't it? And so you, what you could do is use the good old Pythagorean theorem again. The good old Pythagorean theorem says L squared. You could put an L here too if you wanted. L squared plus W squared would equal 16 squared because the diagonal would be 16. So there it is. What are we trying to do again? We're trying to get rid of L. So we're going to solve the Pythagorean theorem for L. You would subtract W squared and take the square root. You get this. And then we go back up to the perimeter function. Wherever there's an L, you can plug in the square root of 256 minus W squared. I believe that's all we can do. All right, let's keep on going here. Uh, something else I want to talk about. Maybe you've seen this before. Similar triangles is another uh, important topic. Uh, two triangles are similar if they have exactly the same angles. And um, if if two triangles are similar, then the corresponding, uh, the, I should say, the ratios of corresponding sides are e equal. So if you assume these two triangles are similar, then if they're similar triangles, it says the ratios of corresponding sides are e equal. There's lots of ways you could say it, but if you wanted to say, let's say you wanted to try to find um, x, you could say that x is to 5, this side is to th this, this leg is to the hypotenuse as 6 is to 10. See? 
that's, that's one, one way you could write it. That gives you an equation involving x. When you cross multiply and solve for x, you get x equal 3. So how could you solve for y? Well, you could say y is to 10 as 4 is to 5. See? This side is to this side as this side is to that side. Then you could cross multiply and solve for y. So y would equal 8. Now, here's, here's the kind of thing you should be able to do. Um, I'm just giving you this. The volume of a cone is given by v equals pi r squared h over 3. That's not one of the formulas I said you need to know for this class, but it, this does com come up. Anyway, it looks a little bit like the volume of a cylinder, doesn't it? Kind of. Anyway, so it's v equals 1 third pi r squared h. So you got this picture right here. What I want you to do to this, with this picture here is I want you to um, express the volume of this small cone here in terms of just h. Okay, so uh, the volume of this small cone can be written as v equals pi r squared h over three. So I want you to get rid of, I want you to get rid of um, r. So can you see similar triangles in this situation? Can you see this big triangle here and this small triangle here are similar? So if you if you if you if you notice that you could say r is to h as what is to what? It'd be four is to sixteen, right? cross multiply and you could solve for r. Now remember we're, we're trying to get this in terms of h so we want to get rid of r. So r is h over 4 and then so you could march over to here into this formula right here and wherever there's a r you could plug in h over 4 because that's what some of triangles helps us to do. And then to simplify this this becomes h squared which becomes, you get h cubed on the top. When you square the 4 don't you get 16? Then when you divide by 3 I think you get 48. So there's your final answer. Okay, well let me give, give you a couple to try. I want to try these two problems. Go ahead and hit the pause button and try these two problems. We'll go over them in just a minute. Okay, on this first one, let's do, let's do number seven first. Express the area of this shaded triangle in terms of H. Well, remember the area of a triangle? The area of a triangle is um, one-half base times height, right? So in this, in this, in this case, it would be one-half, the base would be 2r, and the height would be h. So the area of this triangle is just r times h. And you're supposed to express this in terms of just h. So what is the relationship between r and h if you use similar triangles? Well, you could say r is to h, as 10 is to 24. See? So what are we trying to do? We're trying to get rid of r. So we're going to solve this for r and then wherever there's an r you could replace, so r equals this, so then um, wherever there's an r you could replace it with 5h over 12 so you get 5h squared over 12. That's the answer. Now for the last one it says a square is inscribed in a circle of radius r. Um, remember it's a square now. So um, you want to express the area of the square in terms of r. Well, the area of a square, if you draw this picture here, the area of a square is, if, if this is the length of the side of the square x, then the area would be x squared. Uh, you want to express this in terms of r. So what's the relationship between x and r? Isn't it the Pythagorean theorem? Be careful on this, though, because the Pythagorean theorem says that... Um, x squared plus x squared equals 2r squared, doesn't it? Parentheses 2r squared. So you get 2x squared equals 4r squared. We're trying to get rid of x, right? Actually, look, we have x squared here. Let's not solve for x, let's solve for x squared. So x squared equals 2r squared. So you could replace x squared with 2r squared, and there's your answer. And we're done. Alrighty, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.